here we are, 4.30, day two of Cooking Live with you guys, and I've been looking forward to this all day. So, so excited that y'all are here. Over 4,000 of you all watched the video from yesterday, and I'm blown away by the love. So thank you guys so much. I hope it gave you a little bit of distraction. I hope you went and cooked the lentil soup. Um, I had it for dinner last night, it was delicious. Um, I hope you learned something, and I'm so glad. Um, I hope all of you guys are back with me today, and some new friends as well, um, because I thought what I'd do today is cook something that can bring the kids into the kitchen with you. You know, for middle schoolers and high schoolers, this, re this recipe, they can definitely be on their own. This is something they can absolutely cook on their own. But for little ones in the kitchen with you, this is a great, great recipe because this is what French children are taught by their grandmothers. Um, this is uh, my friend April with uh, Counterintelligence. She has a great Instagram and a great website. She's a dear friend and a, an amazing cook. She told me about this recipe and she said, Anne, this is the first uh, recipe a French child is taught. Um, and, it, and I just fell in love with it. It's just so, um, adorable. You can find little graphics of it on the internet that explain how to make the cake. So <clears throat> I wanted to do it today with you guys. So the way it works is it's just a great little yogurt cake and what they do in France, you know, now we have yogurt in our stores in these glass containers, which I absolutely love because I reuse glass and I love using jars. Um, so this is a little pot of yogurt and this is traditionally how yogurt is has been sold in France forever and so the recipe is the volumes of the recipe are in pots of yogurt so uh, one pot of yogurt one pot of oil two pots of sugar you know that sort of thing so we are going to do it just like they do it in France with these little yogurt pots that we reuse um, but just so you know, the recipe is going up on the website right after this live. Reagan is here. Um, she's going to take some pictures of it, and she's going to put it up on the website. And we are going to have it both the traditional way, where they measure in pots, or, and um, conventional volumes. We've converted it for you guys. But just so you know, this container of yogurt is 5 ounces. This container of yogurt is 5.3 ounces. So they're generally the same size, and you could certainly use one like this if this is what you have in your fridge. But what I'm gonna do first is prepare my pans. So this cake is um, a fair amount of batter, and you need a 10-inch pan. We made it in a nine inch and it made a really big tall, I think Alana even had to reserve some batter. So you definitely wanna to go to a 10 inch pan, but I'm gonna do two smaller ones. So if you've got two kiddos in the kitchen with you, now they're each making their own cake. So the first thing I need to do is prepare the pans. So let's go over what all of these, all of the things that can happen with this recipe. We're talking about a French lesson because this little graphic is in French. We had to use Google Translator to make sure we were following it correctly. You've got easily a math lesson for littles and bigs, um, a basic math, but also a conversion lesson. Um, we're gonna do a little bit of geometry. We've got science, because we're baking. We also um, got a question in. Okay, what's Will the question? Will non-dairy yogurt work? I feel like non-dairy would be fine, like a cashew yogurt. Yeah, since we're using leaveners, um, I would say yeah. So what Alana said, and y'all, we're doing social distancing, and I know it's hard to hear her, but um, some of these recipes with this yogurt um, didn't call for leaveners, and that confused us a little bit. So we definitely wanted to bring some leaveners in there. Leaveners meaning, you guys, the way we get rise is with baking powder or baking soda, and mostly baking powder for cakes. Baking soda goes in cookies. Um, we're using a little bit of both in this cake. Um, I think as long as you have your leaveners, so you're not relying on any of those cultures in that yogurt to give you any lift, um, but I would definitely say that needs to be a full fat yeah. alternative. So we're not using low fat yogurt here, we're using a full fat yogurt. Okay, let's prepare our pan. So I've got parchment paper, it comes in this rectangular size, and I've got to get to a square. So I'm going to fold it in here, that's my first fold. And then I'm going to fold again on top of that. And so now I've got this guy. And I'm going to fold it again. 
on top of itself. This little tail from the rectangle is not, I don't need it, I need a square. So now I've got that, and I'm just gonna fold it in on itself. So now what I wanna do is place this point in the center of the pan on the bottom. Now I'm gonna make a fold so that I know where to cut it. And then I'm gonna cut semi-circle-ish. And when I unfold it, I'm gonna have a circle of parchment that's gonna go in the bottom of my pan and that's gonna help with any sticking. So that's in the bottom of my pan. You guys, baking isn't really where I like to be in the kitchen. It didn't go so well for me. I just wanna give all of you all out there who maybe struggle in a class or two. I made it through culinary school with less than great baked dishes. Um, so there's something for everyone out there. Definitely go to your instructor and ask for that extra credit. Okay, so I know this parchment does its job, but I need some more insurance here, so I'm gonna spray this with a non-stick spray. We love this guy that has a little bit of flour in it. So we've got that pan prepared, and then let's move on to making our cake. So typically with cakes, you definitely have a point where fat and sugar needs to come together. Typically your liquid ingredients come together first and then you dump in your dry. And this, we read these instructions over and over and they were just dumping it all in the, in the bowl all at once. So let's get started. So we need one pot of yogurt. This is where your littles can definitely get in here and do this for you. So we've got a pot of yogurt. And just so you know, it comes to about three quarters of a cup, that 5.3 ounces it's three quarters of a cup. So we've got our pot of yogurt, and this is a plain, full fat yogurt. You could definitely use vanilla if you had vanilla. We've got a pot of oil. We're using pecan oil. You um, wanna use a vegetable oil. So you can use canola or a vegetable oil. Um, I suppose you could turn it into an olive oil cake, but um, yeah. everything we saw was just a vegetable oil. Then we need two pots of sugar. So got this little pot here. You can use that same pot over and over to do all of this, but we're going to get our two pots of sugar in there. One and then a second one. And that's just granulated sugar. And I'm thinking a lot of you all have these ingredients probably knocking around the cabinet and you can make this today. So we got our two pots of sugar. We need our flour, leaveners, and extracts. Oh, and three eggs. So eggs, so we're gonna crack the eggs properly and we're gonna crack them into this bowl to make sure we don't have any shells. But the way I usually do this is I go on a flat surface and just break that shell and then into my bowl and just make sure I don't have any pieces of shell in there. Thank you. So three eggs. If you want to live on the edge and go straight in your bowl, do it. I, I believe in you. All right, we've got our three eggs going in. And little ones can learn to crack eggs. You know, having that bowl to catch the shell is a good idea, but little ones can definitely crack eggs. Okay, I need three three pots of flour, and then I'm gonna add my extracts. So I'm using vanilla extract and almond extract, more vanilla than almond. This is where you wanna look in your cabinet and see what extracts you have on hand, um, because lemon extract for sure, yeah. um, or you know, an orange extract would be fantastic. I always use vanilla extract in combination with my other extract, even in a chocolate cake. If I use like, an espresso extract or a chocolate extract in a chocolate cake, I still use vanilla with it, usually one for one. For this cake, I want that note of almond, but I don't want it to be an almond cake, so I'm using one teaspoon of vanilla extract and a half teaspoon of almond extract. So let's get these extracts in there. Teaspoon of vanilla, half teaspoon of almond. Oh, and salt. 
So the traditional French, French recipe says a pinch of salt. We went ahead and um, we did a teaspoon, teaspoon full yeah. teaspoon of salt in the recipe. Uh, baked goods, I can always tell when the salt has been forgotten or omitted. You know, there's just something about the chocolate chip cookie. You want that salt there, so it's really necessary. And I'm gonna work really hard not to make a huge mess here. No promises. Our leaveners. So baking powder, we're doing a teaspoon. Baking powder is typically in uh, cakes. They give cakes rise. Baking soda, you'll a lot of times see it in a cake recipe along with baking powder, but then soda alone will be in cookie recipes, yeah. and it gives them crunch, and it also helps them brown. So uh, that's the difference between those two leaveners. And again, older kids here, middle school and high school, you're on your own making this cake for your parents or caregivers, and this is a great one to um, extend a slice or the whole cake to a neighbor who might like this. Y'all, that's it. So we've got this batter put together. Fatima, can, can we see in that bowl? So beautiful batter, get that all incorporated. I love the idea, you know, the first thing I made was a cake, but it was a Betty Crocker cake mix cake. But here's what I remember, I couldn't read. I remember this, I couldn't read, but Betty cake mixes, I don't know if they still do this, but they had pictures on the back of what to add in, so I knew how to make it. Um, and I was, it was like, everyone was asleep. It was very early in the morning and I baked a cake and everyone was really excited for me, but I think they were just <laughs> happy to eat cake for breakfast. Yeah. Um, but I thought it was, you know, all about, all about me. So it is the first thing I ever made. Um, and I just love that this is a tradition in France and that it might now be a tradition here. Okay, so we've got this beautiful batter. I am doing everything in my power not to eat some out of the bowl. And we're gonna get it into our prepared pans. So we're gonna split this between the two pans. And I want you to go into kind of a moderate oven, um, more like a 325. Yeah. Um, there's a good bit of sugar in this cake. So it's gonna really wanna brown on you. Um, so I would be careful and just keep an eye on it, but I would go 325 and I think in these two pans now that we've split it between two Alana in that 10 inch pan you think you're 25 to 35 minutes 25 to 35 yeah these would probably be 20 to 25 right so you shave a little bit of time off when you've split up your batter in between two pans But that 10 inch that one 10 inch you're around 25 to 35 minutes and the way you know it's done It's going to be pulling away from the sides when you insert a, a skewer in the center, um, you want it to come out with just a few moist crumbs. Yeah. Um, but we're gonna go in the oven with this, and we did make a 10 inch. Um, again, the magic of Red Stick Spice Facebook Live, we've got one done, and we made a 10 inch, and we're gonna get that plated. Now, as you can see, our cake, there it is, so this oven here at Red Stick Spice is, a, is aggressive. We call it Mother Dragons. And um, it got a little brown, but I guarantee you this cake is fantastic. Um, so I'm gonna tip it out of here. There it comes, and there's your parchment. So that comes right off of there. And I'm gonna get this down on here. And then I need my pan back because when something maybe isn't perfection, doesn't matter, you guys. Um, but let's say you're like, well, I'm not in love with the way that looks. Um, my friend Lily Courtney says there's nothing, that's nothing a little whipped cream can't, can't fix, which is true. But I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with this cake. So I need to make a circle, so I'm just going to do it this way. So I'm going to make my circle. And I'm going to cut this guy out. So again, I'm using parchment. Um, wax paper works if you don't have parchment. And for what I'm doing right here, you wouldn't want to bake with it, but for what I'm doing right here, you could just use a clean sheet of paper because all I'm doing is making a stencil. So I've got my circle cut out. It's the size of my cake. And then I'm gonna fold it in half and I'm just gonna freehand this, but I'm gonna take my scissors and cut this shape. Okay, so now that's what I've cut out. 
that's what I have. I'm going to lay that on top of my cake. And then, got powdered sugar. Powdered sugar on top of there. Lift my stencil off. And there is our French yogurt cake. So your kids are definitely in the kitchen less than an hour, I would say. Yeah. You saw how quickly that batter came together. And then you're around 30 minutes in the oven. And then this cake, when we were tasting it earlier, Alana made a test cake last night. It's delicious. When we were tasting this cake, we wanted it with a cup of coffee, for yeah. sure. It would be great with a cup of tea. It is a sweet cake. It's got nice texture to it um, from the yogurt, but it is definitely a sweet cake. So we are thinking, if you want it after you make it and see how you like it, if, let's get me a plate so I can plate this with the jam. Um, then you start thinking of what other flavors could you bring in here? So we definitely love the idea of some citrus, probably a dinner plate, Alana. Um, some citrus for sure, so orange zest or lemon zest in the batter and you bake it. You could do a quick lemon simple syrup to soak on top of the cake when it's hot, when it comes out of the oven. Um, I love the idea of a handful of chocolate chips Yeah, in the batter, it would Absolutely. be delicious. Um, but yeah, super simple, but open to lots and lots of um, flavor add-ins. So let me try to keep that slice with the corner on it. And what I'm gonna do, what I've done, is taken some jam. So we wanna bring some tartness into it. So I've taken a jam, this is Grinning Jupiter Jammery. If you're in Baton Rouge, this is a local artisan who would love for you to cook with her jams at home right now. We sell them and she sells them all around town. So I'm gonna take one of her, this is cherry. Cherry. And it's a preserve or, a, this one's or is a it jelly. a jelly? Oh, it's a jelly, yeah. okay. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the cherry jelly and on my plate. And then top it with that cake. Dollop of whipped cream would be lovely right there. And that is gorgeous and delicious. Okay, grab yourself a plate, Alana. We need to taste this. We get you some jam. So, great activity for the kids. That pot of yogurt, that little container of yogurt, um, ends up being your measuring device. A great lesson about French culture. Um, a little bit of geometry. A adorable stencil. And I think that's a pretty good lesson. So let's see what, how we did. Great. Stop it. That's so good. Really good, you guys. This has been so much fun. Thank you, guys. I'm coming back tomorrow at 4.30. Um, I look forward to this all day. This is how I ground myself. This is how I take a little moment away from everything that's going on. I hope it's helped you guys as well. So please let me know what you'd like to see us cook. Let us know what you're cooking. And I'll see you back here at 4.30 tomorrow. Thanks, guys.